something to declare. So the AVERT trial really was prompted by the clinical equipoise that we have around when we should begin early rehabilitation. Um, this trial is about early out of bed mobilisation and we've called that very early mobilisation. The design is an international, multi-centre, parallel group trial that's comparing two different protocols. One which is starting within 24 hours of stroke onset and includes uh, out of bed mobility based intervention compared to usual um, post-stroke care. So based on our uh, previous knowledge of, um, from, small, from a number of small studies and uh, our previous pilot work, our clinical hypotheses were these, that earlier intervention would lead to improved functional outcome at three months and fewer immobility related complications at three months that it would lead to more patients regaining the ability to walk early and improve quality of life and be cost, cost effective at 12 months. In this presentation, I'll be focusing on these very early results from these first key um, hypotheses. So our inclusion criteria are very broad for the study. Uh, we include pa included patients with both ischemic stroke and intracerebral hemorrhage they needed to be recruited within 24 hours of stroke onset. There was no upper age limit for this population. They needed to meet um, important uh, safety criteria for physiological parameters and patients who were treated with RTPA were permitted into the trial. People have seen this often before, it's just a simple, simple uh, schematic of, the in, of bringing people into the study within 24 hours. They were then randomised and stratified by stroke severity and sight. If they were randomised into their very early intervention, that included very early mobilisation on top of usual care, and that began within 24 hours of stroke onset, delivered by nurses and physiotherapists working together. Those in usual care had usual stroke care, and intervention continued for 14 days maximum or until uh, discharge from the acute stroke unit, whichever came first. For the intervention, which I won't go into a lot of detail with at the moment, but we were aiming for a more frequent and higher dose intervention with at least three additional out of bed active therapy sessions in the day. Our primary efficacy outcome, as I said, is favourable outcome on the modified Rankin scale and I'll be presenting the safety data as well. And our sample size was 2,104 patients based on an assumption uh, or wanting to test um, whether or not we could get 7% or greater uh, difference between the two groups. Our analysis, statistical analysis plan was published uh, earlier this year in the International Journal of Stroke and these are the three key areas that I'll be discussing today. The efficacy outcomes, which include both our um, primary MRS dichotomised outcome, assumption-free ordinal analysis, walking recovery and some exploratory subgroup analyses and some safety data and dose intervention data. Our trial performance is shown here. We wanted 2,104 patients and we got them. And uh, the, DART, the trial went on though for uh, many years, from 2006 to October um, 2014. We had recruitment from 56 sites in five countries. Important to note is that we had a very low rate of refusals. Very few people said no to a study that was about recovery and rehabilitation. The other important thing to note is that we had 99% follow-up on patients, which is a remarkable achievement. So well-balanced baseline characteristics across the groups, you can see here. The important things to note is that most uh, patients, or our median time to uh, randomise uh, to, to recruitment into the study and randomisation was 18 hours in both groups. And at that time, uh, patients had a median NIHSS of seven in both groups. The other things to note is that 26% of this population were over the age of 80 years. 
that 45% had moderate to severe stroke, that 12% of the population had intracerebral haemorrhage, and that 24% were treated with thrombolysis. Our intervention achieved significant differences. Time to first mobilisation was 18 and a half hours in the VEM group and 22.4 hours in usual care. The frequency was also achieved. We wanted to get a, three additional sessions and we did. The daily amount per person that's recorded here is a median daily. It reflects um, only the physiotherapist data, not nursing data, but frequency includes both. The important things to note here is that 75% of all patients in this start, trial started a mobilisation within 24 hours of stroke onset. The other thing that was noted in our analysis is that in the usual care group, the time to first mobilisation reduced by 28 minutes each year to end up with a median of 22.4 hours after stroke onset. So here are our main results. For the favourable outcome, our primary analysis, in the very early mobilisation group, 46% of patients had an MRS of 0 to 2. In the usual care group, 50% had an MRS of 0 to 2. And this difference was significant. So patients in the VEM group had a less favourable outcome than those in usual care. The assumption-free ordinal analysis was not significant. Time to first to walking 50 metres unassisted, there was no significant difference between the two groups. When we look at the outcome by subgroup shown in this slide, you can see that for all the different subgroups that we examined, they're all sitting in favouring usual care. There are a couple of things that are important to note, I think. One is the intracerebral haemorrhage uh, group. We had 260 patients who had intracerebral haemorrhage, 255 reflected in this outcome. Um, the other thing to note is that those patients we've treated with RTPA had no uh, appreciably, were not appreciably different to those who are not treated with RTPA, so it didn't add any additional um, harm. There was no significant difference uh, between each of these subcategories. So although there's some indication of harm here, um, there, this was not significant. In looking at the deaths, safety data, there were 16 additional deaths in the very early mobilisation group. This was not statistically significant. The main causes of death were counting for 64% are shown here. So higher numbers of stroke progression in the very early mobilisation group compared to usual care and then similar for pneumonia and recurrent stroke. If we look at non-fatal serious adverse events, this is where we see that 80% of people in this study did not have a serious adverse event. There was no significant difference between the groups. In terms of immobility related, fatal and non-fatal SAEs, the low rates of um, SAEs in this category are important to note. So nearly only 5% of patients in this trial experienced an immobility related um, adverse event. Neurologically, again, very low rates of adverse events. And although there was a higher number in uh, VEM, this was not significant. So our conclusions are the following. Meeting protocol is a key challenge in rehabilitation trials, but we achieved a significant difference in the frequency, amount and timing of rehabilitation. So we can be confident that this uh, result is real. The very early higher dose of out-of-bed activity reduced the odds of a favourable outcome without accelerating walking recovery or reducing immobility-related adverse events. There is an assumption that more is better, and we believe that more, more is better may not apply in this early time frame after stroke. There were low rates of death, serious adverse events, 
and immobility related um, adverse events in this trial. But there were some differences that signal harm and these are important for us to follow up. The high quality data in this international trial provides us with the best opportunity yet to come up with clear guidance about early rehabilitation interventions and further exploration will help underpin our clinical practice guidelines. The interventions delivered in this trial are complex and even the superior usual care intervention is complex. So understanding the components that lead to benefit or harm is a priority and our pre-specified dose response analysis, which will be our next port of call, is important. We have shown the world that these trials can be done and that's a really great achievement. We'll be presenting some further results from this trial um, on Sunday and the results will be available on the Lancet following this presentation. Thank you.